Hey guys, Coach Keating here. I just had a great interview with the winningest Division III program in history on the women's side. The guy's name is Scott Fry. He's the head coach of Messiah College and they have a 91.9% win rate, which is unheard of. I want to tell you something. They never talk about winning. What do they talk about? And what makes them tick? That's the topic of this video. And I, I think we would, you know, tie that under the idea of pride. Yeah. And and pride in a in a very positive way, meaning pride in who we are as an organization, as a group, that we do things well. Mm -hmm. uh, um, because you know, pride also includes humility, right? Yeah. There's it, it takes it takes strength to be humble to understand that I I have value but I'm not more valuable than somebody else. Mm -hmm. like that's and, and the same thing with our program. Like we're not better than anybody else, but we have pride in who we are. We're humble enough to go like, we have to be prepared. We have to be our, at our best, whatever we do, uh, that matters. So how would you then, if you could just boil down what the Messiah way is, you know, if you looked mm -hmm. at Angela, and I know you saw Angela's, the tutorial we did with Angela and she talked about having your way, whatever your way is, and having it be a bright line. I love those two points was, you know, having your way and then a bright line between your way and other ways. What What's the Messiah way? Wow. Um, I think we, we have we have boiled down our program to six core values. Yeah. We used to have, you know, we had a pyramid. We had 12. We had we had so many things. And I'm like, I got to be able to synthesize this to something that I can articulate, yeah. that our players can grasp, that it's not so big. And so we got to six. Uh, the first one is selflessness. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, I think, the one that everything else builds upon, that we are looking for young women who desire to be a part of a group where a decision may never be made in their best interest. Mm. It will always be about the team. And they want to defer to the team. They want to be part of a team where everything will be looked through that lens. So selfless. Relentless improvement. That mm. we are continuously always getting better. And for me, that is simply get out of bed and put your shoes on and go for a run. Yeah. Right? It's that simple. Yeah. Um, so relentless improvement is, her, is, is big for us. Uh, excellence. Excellence for, for us is defined as, you know, Actions, simple actions in, in and of themselves done consistently and correctly compounded over time. Excellent. Who said, did somebody, say, who said that? Oh, yes, we, we steal everything. No, 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 but there's somebody, um, it's not Einstein, it's, it might be Einstein. So, Interesting. Yeah, those things just done, compounded together over time, consistent, yeah. simple, right? They're simple things. Yeah. Go train, eat well. Go to bed on time. Yeah. Get your homework done. Mm -hmm. You know, that's those are excellence things. Mm -hmm. um, servant leadership. Hmm. We are we are that is very important for us that our upperclassmen understand their their main role is to serve, to to help those who are who they're you know working with become their best selves. When you say they're, I they mean the underclassmen, the the yes. younger kids or anybody. Yes. Yeah. Incoming freshmen, underclassmen. The, the, the upperclassmen's job is to serve. It's little things like, hey, when we you know we go to eat, seniors always eat last. That's very interesting. Very interesting because in a lot of a lot of environments, it would be seniors first, and uh, I I totally get what way you're coming from because. And it's it's like this concept of gratitude. If you there's so much been there's a lot of research even recently on gratitude in that, you know, just the idea of feeling grateful to other people. And there's a, a saying in South Africa called Ubuntu, which means I am because of you. And there is a it's a deep feeling of gratitude. It makes you feel, you know, it, you, you get more composed, you get more relaxed and you feel better about yourself. You feel better because you're giving to others so I think servant leadership is just right on it's not about me it's about what I can do to help others yeah I always find it interesting when I tell stories to, to high school kids right because the environment you just described is the classic environment I mean the freshman's job what's their life well to get the water bring the balls yeah right? that's their that's their life that's their role right? yeah that's their role but yet 20 minutes later you want them on the field competing with you 
and caring. Yeah. Right. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So yeah, walk by, walk down the hallway and say hi. Yeah. Just engage them. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a, it's fun. I'm not sure where this comes from. Is is it a hazing mentality? Is it the sure, it's, it's a, rite of passage it's, mentality? Yeah. It's a, it's a prove your worth, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, say you're, you know, you have earned your way in. Yeah. Our, our position is, no, we wanted you here. Yeah. We ask you to be a part of us. Yeah. We're going to make you feel welcome to be a part of us. Yeah. Just what we need. Yeah. Uh, positive attitude. Yeah. You choose to be positive. That's a choice. Circumstances, whatever, <laughs> coronavirus, we're going to choose to be positive. We're going to choose to, to make the best of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the last one is invested relationships. Um, the key part of the invested relationships for us, I think there's two key things that go into that one. First of all, is a team of grace. Uh, again, that's just a part of our faith aspect. Yeah. But that we're valued and loved and because you're on my team. And if there's an offense, I agree to let it go. Why? Because that's what was modeled by Christ for us. Yeah. Uh, this idea of grace. Yeah. So to have a, to, to develop a team culture that uh, embodies that, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the last one is to mean no offense, take no offense, and that means I'm able to have a conversation with you. Uh, sometimes hard, but it's out of love. It's out of caring for you as a teammate that we can have a conversation, whether it's on the field, off the field, um, and it's and it's because I value you. It's a mat- it's a very mature concept. Uh, you know, it's something that you, I'm sure you you try and teach your your players, but also your kids when they were younger. But it's it does take a there's something internal that has to switch and click that all of a sudden yeah, yeah. I completely get it it's not about me it's much bigger than me right and and you can't get it here's what I think is the other thing different in coaching or I think challenging in coaching or coaches feel and I was even reading something about this the other day that you, you can't develop character or your team culture by rules rules will never get you your culture mm-hmm. you don't get to behave in a certain way but it's not going to change their heart yeah right? so you can get your team to follow your rules but I don't want them to follow my rules I want them to follow their heart and what they really desire to be and become and when that happens now you got something right because coaches are all the time I'm talking to and it's like well what are your rules we have no rules there are no rules um our rules are to become, you know, our desires to become the best team we can be, the best program we can be, the, yeah. the best place in the country to play, mm-hmm. which has nothing to do with wins and losses. Yeah. It has everything to do with our team and relationships. And it's not because we have a set of rules, it's because we have this culture that when you step into it, you either embrace it or this is not for me. And that just doesn't happen very often. Is there... I ask this question sometime of uh, Tolkien's one ring to rule them all. Is there one that just, not that it dominates, but that it's really, really kind of the core ring to rule them all? And I know that, that hopefully that, that works no, for you. I think it's the first one. Yeah. Selflessness. Yeah. Everything else comes under that because when one's selfless and it's not about me, then I'm willing to do all those other things. Yeah. You know, it's that environment is what I know every parent in America, they dream of that kind of an environment, uh, that culture of of acceptance and love and work, hard work and discipline. They dream of that for their kids. And again, it, it's whether it's spiritual or not, that's the environment that they want their kids in. So you you've created something that is just remarkable and, and the results show and i know that you're a john wooden fan and he never talked about winning you never talk about winning and i love that but that's the that's the that is the magical that's kind of the that's the magic of this is that you focus on all of the things that you need to focus on which is process in order to get results and in order to grow as a human being so that's just so powerful and every parent in america wants that for their kids.